Jaden Daniels w emerged as a mystery man, quite frankly. And everybody saw what he could do. Everybody saw him win the Heisman. He didn't work out. He wasn't there when the quarterbacks were working out. It, it, he, I, I honestly have learned nothing about him at the combine. At least Drake May I heard from and I saw. Caleb Williams didn't work out at all, but he stuck till the very end. Like he literally turned the lights out on Saturday, watched his teammates go through the drills. Uh, can you help me on who Jaden Daniels is and what teams may be learning about him? Yeah, right I now? think Jaden Daniels from the start when he got to ASU and I'm, I don't know, 168 pounds or whatever he weighed. Right. Um, and it was on a program that was kind of reeling uh, under Herm at that point, got to LSU, made big improvement, and then made another huge stride as a passer this past year. Um, you know, they really embraced technology. It was interesting. Jack Marucci, who's, by the way, the same guy behind Maru the Marucci Bats Empire, mm -hmm. is a longtime LSU trainer. And he is arguably the smartest guy I know who works in college sports. And they really got in on the front end of the... Uh, on the technology side, what it can do for quarterbacks with a with a company, I think, from Germany that was doing some really cool stuff. They embraced it. It made a big difference with what, what Jaden um, did as a passer. And I think you'd see him in games and you'd see that he has this different gear. I don't want to say he's Lamar because to me Lamar is just is kind of one of one. But in terms of what he did last year, it um, was pretty amazing to see how far he's grown as a passer mm -hmm. from the time he got to LSU. Now, it certainly helped that he had two elite receivers. I mean, Brian Thomas Jr. is spectacular. Um, Malik Neighbors is is freaky as well. So on that side, I don't, you know, to me, this is such an interesting quarterback, quarterback group because obviously there's Caleb. You mentioned May. And then I think behind them, J.J. looked really good, J.J. McCarthy, and Michael Penix Jr. looked terrific. And I, I think it's a deep group, but it wouldn't surprise me if those guys who a lot of people are saying are like the fourth and fifth guys, depending on who you want fourth and who you are in fifth, they may turn out to be better quarterbacks than a, than a couple of those guys in the top three. Well, obviously, those are the two quarterbacks that we saw last in college football. Those are the starters for the national championship game. But we were just talking before you were walking out here. Are we talking about McCarthy and Penix more because they worked out? They spun it. Like if, if Drake may, if Jaden Daniels got out there ran his 40, did the drills, spun it, and then we'd be talking about him as why isn't he maybe the first overall pick while Caleb sat, you know. that And, and again, this may just be the the um, the media battle that you, the PR battle that might be an important piece to anybody's campaign to get drafted as high as possible, or, I or not at all. I think if those other guys threw, I still think Penix would have been the guy that DJ would have been raving about and other people would have been going. Because uh, when you see him throw in person, I get it, he's left-handed, and sometimes people's optics think it comes out looking a little different. To me, Penix throws it, nobody throws it better in that in this group, whether they threw on Saturday or not. Obviously, obviously Joe Milton had the biggest arm, yeah, but in did. terms of just how he throws the ball, I think Penix is remarkable. And by the way, Penix didn't run the 40. I will say this. So one of the quarterbacks I've gotten to know over the years is Keaton Slovis, former USC, now BYU quarterback. He was out there too. And Keaton ran really well. Keaton ran 4-5-5. Five, five, and I think that, like, if you were a Pitt fan or a USC fan, you're like, whoa. Well, Keaton's in a group, Les Spellman, who's one of the best combine trainers, you know, speed guys in the, in the country. So he had a group of a lot of quarterbacks that were out here in Southern California. And Jaden's in that group and Penix is in that group. And hopefully not speaking out of school here, Keaton, but like a couple of like a week and a half ago, they did a mock combine. And I think Keaton ran maybe four six zero, which obviously ran even faster when it mattered. But um, we, I, at one point we talked about Penix. He was like, he's going to really surprise people. He goes, he four five, maybe four four. Um, and he didn't run and he but he really can run. And I, I think, again, I don't want to stand here. I'm stumping for Michael Penix Jr., but. I think he is, to me, he's the most interesting guy in the draft because he was the guy who actually, I used my Heisman vote on him. I had, I think I had Jaden too, but what he did with that program was remarkable. And to see how he threw it, not surprised because that's what we've seen him do. Uh, he wasn't great against your alma mater. He was great against Texas and was great almost against everybody else though. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll push back a little bit. I, I thought he was great against Michigan. Michigan obviously had a terrific defense 
Um, I think he also got his his ankle stepped on, unfortunately for him, at the very beginning of the second half. I'm wondering how healthy he was for the rest of the game. But that 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 dude can figure out a defense pre snap really well. I mean, he's using his his experience very well. I I don't know, man. Raiders sitting there at 13. You got the Saints sitting there. Don't overthink it. You know, don't overthink it if you're them. Right. I mean. I think he's he's awesome. The other thing I love about him is, and we talked about this probably a month ago, of all the guys, especially the quarterback position, usually, and DJ and I, had, I talked about this because this is a story I did and I interviewed him for it, was Penix faced real adversity that really shook him for a minute. And he came through the other side. He's really candid talking about it. And he's faced it and dealt with it. And so when I talk to other quarterbacks who who were, you know, EJ Manuel is a, is a really bright guy. Was obviously a former first round pick. We talked about this how like when he got hurt with the Bills, you know, it's a different thing for you. How do you bounce back from it? A lot of quarterbacks. I'm not saying the main reason why the guys who are first round picks don't work out mm-hmm. is always because they can't handle adversity, but that is a big part of it. And this guy, we know he's ha- how he ha- how he came through it. Um So, yeah, if you told me he went 13, I'd be like, yeah, I think that's a wise pick for that that franchise. That might, if he does go 13, and Chris, on our overreaction Monday, one of your first subject matters was five in the first 20. And I'm like, that's not an overreaction. We got five in the first 13. I'm serious. Yeah, I mean, mean, look, JJ's a terrific athlete, throws well on the run. You know, I get it. Some people are a little concerned. They think there's a, you know, I talked to one NFL coach who's like, thought he was a little bit more of a one-speed pitcher uh, in terms of want to see him layer the ball and do some other things. But, like... Great footwork, you know, he's a winner. He's a mentally strong kid. I think there's, you know, I could see him keep developing, and he threw it really well. I mean, the only one who probably threw it any better it's was Penix. Pen- yeah. I mean, I, I, again, uh, uh, Penix, I had not seen thrown in person. I, I was wowed. Yeah. Honestly, every throw was beautiful. It was a work of art. Uh, I, I couldn't have been more impressed by what I saw. And I heard... Nothing but great things uh, in the in meeting the, rooms. By the, the way, out of room. out of all of them, yeah, I, I didn't hear any, and and that includes Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, out of the top choices, I didn't hear any of like, well, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't uh, interview very well. No, all of them. No, you no know? one guy who I, who I heard anything like a little bit of a pause on is is somebody who I'm like I would have no doubts about that guy's character. I just think a couple of the questions this particular person got asked, I think were like just like, you know, didn't, it was like kind of caught off guard by them and just mm-hmm. like kind of gave an honest answer. Um, but, you know, the, you know, everybody prepares for this process anyway. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't, you know, certain guys shine more than others. I would just say that. Bruce Feldman here on the Rich Eisen Show. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.